Welcome to Femme Family Church, a house of prayer for all nations. Praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this day. We thank God for what he has done for us and made us see 2021. We are going to begin with some intercession. We need to pray. Paul says that in, in all things and at all times, you know, we should be praying with thanksgiving, supplication, and says all manner of prayer. And even after receiving the prophetic word on Sunday by the founder of Faith Evangelistic Ministry, Reverend Teresia Wairimo, now we have direction on what to pray about. But I'm going to read a scripture today in relation to the word we received on Sunday to guide us in our prayers today. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 11 and 12, the word of the Lord says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old wastes. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the bridge and restorer of streets to dwell in. This portion of scripture, this chapter is talking about praying and fasting. And then this scripture is a promise after prayer and fasting and fulfilling the things that the Lord is saying. That the Lord will guide us continually and to satisfy our souls in drought and strengthen our bones. We shall be like a watered garden in 2021 and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And this is, this scripture says, those, those from among you shall build the old waste places and we shall raise up the foundation of many generations and we shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the streets to dwell in. This year, we were spoken to by the prophet about foundations. And this morning as we begin to pray, I want us to begin praying by, you know, raising up the foundations that were destroyed for many generations. The foundations of prayer, the foundations of fasting, the foundations of, you know, honesty, righteousness, you know, seeking God. And today let us begin this intercession with calling on God and telling God to help us raise the right foundations this year in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise this day. We thank you for giving us direction for 2021. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through your servant, Lord, that we should deal with foundations, that our foundations have to be right in 2021, both individually and, Father God, as the church and even as the nation. And today we come to you, O mighty one of Israel, the God of all flesh, the God who rules and reigns from generation to generation. We come to you in the name of Jesus. And today we are repenting of every wrong foundation, every wrong foundation in our lives today. We are repenting in the name of Jesus, where we have built on the wrong foundation we are praying in the mighty name of Jesus that you will even forgive us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us for building on the foundation of corruption, even as a nation in the name of Jesus. Forgive us for building on the foundation, O God, of betrayal as a nation in the name of Jesus. We pray that you may forgive us even as a nation for building even on the foundation of immorality in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we repent, O God. We repent Repent and we pray in the name of Jesus. The Father God, you will help us undo even the wrong foundations in the name of Jesus. We today bring the foundations of our family. Father, every kind of idol worship in our families. We repent in the name of Jesus. We are repenting for every kind of wrong foundation in our families in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft in our generation. Every immorality in our generation 
In the name of Jesus, we repent. All kind of injustice in our foundation, oh God, we repent in the name of Jesus. Today, we turn our face to you, oh God, and we pray that you will forgive us for every kind, God, of wrong foundation, every kind of wrong foundation in the family, Lord. We repent in the name of Jesus, where there is blood crying on the ground. We repent this day in the name of Jesus, where there is tears, oh God, that have been crying in our family, even against us, oh God, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus, where there was injustice, oh God, where there was grabbing of land, oh God, we are repenting today, even on behalf of our families in the name of Jesus, we are repenting of the evil foundations, all consulting witches, consulting foreign gods in the mighty name of Jesus, the gods of tradition. Lord, we repent today and we uproot those foundations in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, I want you to uproot evil foundations in your family, even foundation in your genealogy in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying for God and today we are uprooting in your presence all the foundations of the generation that do not represent you because you say in your word that we shall not have any other God besides you and we shall not worship any other God, any form, any image, any statue, Lord, you say in your word that we shall not worship it. Oh God, where there was idol worship, today we repent and we uproot that foundation in the name of Jesus. Where there was injustice, oh God, where there was tears, oh God, because of us, because of our family, oh God, we repent in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray today that you will help us establish, Lord, even the right foundation is in our lives and the right foundation in the nation. In the name of Jesus, we repent, oh God, for the wrong foundation of corruption in the nation. We repent for the foundation of betrayal in the name of Jesus. We repent from the foundation, oh God, of immorality in the name of Jesus. And today, God, we pray, help us build the right foundations in the nation. In the name of Jesus, today, God, according to your word, we repair, oh God, even the breaches, oh God, in the nation. We are repairing the gaps, oh God. And even in the nation, in the name of Jesus, you say in your word, oh God, that you are looking for a man who will stand in the gap and who will even stand in the gap, oh God, and repair the bridge and even cover the hedge. Today we are standing for the sake of Kenya. We are covering every bridge. We are repairing every bridge in the name of Jesus. Every bridge in our security. Lord, we pray for your covering. We stand in the gap in the name of Jesus. We pray that God will protect the nation. We plead for Kenya, Lord. We are praying whether there are gaps, oh God, that the canopy of your presence, that your angels will protect in the name of Jesus. We are, God, repairing every breach, every breach of any entrance, of every kind of behavior, even through the internet and even through the TVs that are influencing our young people. We today repair the breach in the name of Jesus. We are praying, oh God, that will bring a time of repentance in the nation and a time of seeking you in the name of Jesus, a time of searching after you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray that you will pour out your hunger, the hunger for your word and the hunger for your presence even upon the young people in the name of Jesus. Father God, that you shall satisfy even their hunger in the name of Jesus. You say in your word that you satisfy the hungry soul. You feel the longing soul, O oh God. We pray that the quest, O oh God, that is in the heart of the young people in this nation, O oh God, the Father, you shall fill it with your presence. Lord, we repent on behalf of the young people and we pray, O oh God, where we failed, even as parents, O oh God, where we failed as role models, O oh Father, we are repenting today and we pray, O oh God, bring a time of revival, a time of drawing the young men and the young women to you in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we declare your word in the book of Joel 2.28 that you shall pour your spirit upon all flesh that the young men and the women shall prophesy in the name of Jesus. Lord, they shall not be destroyed. For the fire will not destroy our 
young men. Fire will not destroy our young people in the name of Jesus, but they shall be drawn to the light of your knowledge in the name of Jesus. They shall be drawn to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We today stand in the gap, O oh God, and we repair the breach in our education system in the name of Jesus. We are praying for the children who are back in school, O oh God. We ask you, Lord, that your hand will be upon them, that you will keep the little ones in the name of Jesus. Oh God, may you protect them. Keep them from the infections and the diseases in the name of Jesus. We today put a boundary marker of the blood of Jesus around our children in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the COVID will not sweep over the schools in the name of Jesus. Lord, preserve the young people. Preserve the children in school, oh God. Watch over them in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will spare them. We pray for your sparing mercy, even to be upon the young people and to be upon the children in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we shall not have pandemics in school in the name of Jesus. We shall not have infections and diseases in school in the name of Jesus. We are arresting every spirit of confusion in the education sector. We arrest every spirit of, of strandedness in the name of Jesus. We are praying, oh God, that you will cause us parents, oh God, even to arise and even stand in the gap and even pray with our children and even study the word and give them direction at this particular hour in the name of Jesus. Lord, we remember every child who has not yet gone back to school, oh God, because of school fees. We pray for your provision. We pray provide for every parent who is trusting you to take their children back to school. Provide everything they need. Provide the school in the name of Jesus. Provide and supply in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we are standing in the gap and we are refusing with our children. We declare our children will not be destroyed. They shall be saved in the name of Jesus. They shall be drawn to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, Father God, our children will not be no more. But Father God, they shall be and they shall grow up to be an army and a generation that fears you in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we stand in the gap for them and we pray, oh God, watch over them. We pray, protect them in the name of Jesus. We are praying for the government of the day. We pray for wisdom. We pray for counsel and direction. Even in the year 2021, we pray for your wisdom and your counsel and even your direction in the name of Jesus. The Father God, they will lead the nation even according to your way in the mighty name of Jesus. The Father God, this nation will exalt you. That this nation, oh God, will bring you glory in the name of Jesus. We today arise against everything and anything that is not of God in the nation in the name of Jesus. Anything that is not of God, everything that is about to bring this nation down, we arise against it in the name of Jesus. We are praying for the economy of the land. Oh God, you are our provider. We pray that you may provide for your people. We pray that you may supply the needs of your people in the name of Jesus. Remember your people this year. Remember your people in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for your church today. We pray that your church will arise. The church will take the front place. The church will be a repairer, even of the breaches in the name of Jesus. We are praying for a revival in the churches. We are praying for a time of renewal. We are praying for a time of restoration in the churches in the name of Jesus. Father God, where churches shut, oh God, where the churches were shut, where the churches went down in numbers, we are praying for a time of revival. We are praying for a time of drawing men to you. We pray that the people of Kenya will run to you this year in the name of Jesus. The church will offer comfort, oh God. We pray for your presence. We pray for revival, that even people will go to your house, even to look for answers in the name of Jesus. We pray for springing up, oh God, of strong apostolic churches, oh God, that carry your presence in the name of Jesus, even to minister to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Femme Family Church. In the remaining one minute, pray for Femme Family Church members and every partner in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit every partner, even to you in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, even according to the word that has come, oh God, that this year, Lord, there shall be a distinction. We declare upon every member and upon every partner that the Lord will guide us continually, that you, oh God, you will guide us continually. We are asking you to guide us continually in 
2021 in the name of Jesus. Father, satisfy our soul in drought. We pray that you will satisfy our soul in the midst of hardship in the name of Jesus. You will satisfy our soul in drought in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray that you will strengthen our frame. You will strengthen our frame. We shall be healthy. We shall be strong in the mighty name of Jesus. No sickness and disease will take any of us out because God, you will protect us in the name of Jesus. Father God, even in a tough year, we shall be like a well-watered garden. We shall be like a well-watered garden and we shall be like a spring, O God of water, whose water does not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. O God, we pray that your hand will be upon Fem Family Church members. We pray for the partners abroad. We pray for the partners in every part of this nation. In the name of Jesus, that this year, a time of refreshing, a time of visitation, a time of distinction, in the mighty name of Jesus, a time of prosperity, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we speak comfort right now to every family member who has lost their member, in the name of Jesus, who has lost their relative God. We are praying for your comfort to those families. We pray for your strength, O oh God, the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning, in the name of Jesus, double even for their trouble, for the beautiful ashes, O oh God. We pray that 2021, O oh God, they shall smile, they shall laugh, O oh God, because of your presence in the name of Jesus. And Father, now we pray, even God, for this service today. We pray for the preacher of the word. We pray for the singing, O oh God. May you speak to us, O oh Lord. May you minister to us and help us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us for a time of prayer. Please help us, help me welcome the worship team to worship together with us.
so much, worshippers. We've come to a very important moment where you're going to hear the word of the Lord. And I hope you're ready to hear the word of the Lord. As Minister Hubbard preached, one of the things that is going to keep us this year is the word of the Lord. Reading, meditating, and even listening to the word of the Lord. The man of God I'm about to invite is a great speaker and a great teacher of the word of God. A pastor at heart, somebody who loves people and loves the work of God. With the joy of the Lord, I want you to help me welcome Pastor Zachary to come and share with us the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to honor the Lord God this morning for his grace and for his mercy. The Lord God who has brought us to the year 2021 I want to thank him and to bless him, and I also want to appreciate the prophet of God, uh, the founder of Faith Evangelistic Ministry, our mom, for allowing God to use her and for granting us this opportunity that I can come and share the word of God. Mom, I want to say that I and my family do honor and appreciate you, and we also appreciate the grace of God that is in your life. I also would like to appreciate everybody who has joined us today, may the grace that is in this house also envelope you and envelope your family and envelope your nations. Now this morning I want us to share the word of God from the book of Samuel. Uh, that is 1 Samuel. And I'm just going to read a few verses. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, we're going to read verse 9 to 11 and then skip to verse 26 to 28. So I read uh, verse 9 to 11. The Bible says, So Hannah arose, after they had finished eating and drinking at Sh in Shiloh, now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Let's jump to verse 26. The Bible says, I read, And she said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I'm the woman who stood, my Lord, sorry, O oh Lord, my Lord, let me repeat it again. And she said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. Amen. The title of the, my message this morning is Actualizing the Principle of First Fruits. Actualizing the Principle of First Fruits. And I will start with a question and then I will answer. What is a fast fruit? First of all, correct it by saying that it's not just fast fruit, it is fast fruits. It's a variety. It's a, a fast, fast fruits because it's a variety. And we will be finding out as we continue. The Jews in the Old Testament, they viewed the principle of fast fruits as investment into the future. For them, it was an investment. For them, it was like putting their money in a high-earning fixed deposit account with a guarantee that they shall withdraw the money at the appointed time and it shall not be only the, 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 the initial, but they shall also be having some very good interest on it. As a kingdom principle, the fast fruit principle never fails. It is tried and tested. Anything that is of God can never fail. And I will also want to say that God will never do anything new here on earth without the principle of first fruit. The sun is the image of the invisible God. The first fruit, if I can change it, over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him, and for him he is before all things, and in him 
all things hold together. Jesus was the first fruit that was offered before the creation of everything, and through him, everything created was created. John puts it this way. That is in John chapter 1, verse 3. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. So Jesus is the first fruit of all creation. He was offered before everything was created. When God wanted to bring salvation to us, when we needed salvation, God offered another first fruit. I said God always uses this principle. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 29, the Bible says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn, that he might be the firstborn, and I say the firstborn is a first fruit, that he might be a first fruit among many brothers and sisters. We have become Jesus' brothers and sisters because he has been made a first fruit. Amen. When it came for, to resurrection, for there to be a future resurrection of the dead, God offered a first fruit. I say this is the principle that he uses. Resurrection of the dead is not about if, it is about when. Why? Because a first fruit has been given. And once a first fruit is given, there is always a harvest. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So we are going to resurrect. The grave is not the end. This is a guarantee there's going to be a resurrection because Christ has been raised as a first fruit so that you and me can resurrect and we can live with God forever and ever. My question comes now. How can we operate this principle here on earth? How can we operate it like God? Because we see that when God is doing a new thing here on earth, he uses a first fruit. He uses a principle. How can we operationalize this principle? How can we, I mean, how can we actualize it in our present day? And I want to give three points. I know there are more, more points. But I say that with three points, with these three points, we can be able to actualize the principle of fast fruits as God intends. Point number one, revolution. Revolution, and I will say that we need a revolution. I love this song that they say that we need a revolution because it is the truth. We need a revolution. And revolution is a fundamental change in the way of thinking about or visualizing something. I repeat again, revolution is a fundamental change in the way of thinking about or visualizing something. Revolution is a sudden, radical, or complete change. Revolution is a change of paradigm. Let me bring it down. If you want to understand what a revolution is, just take time and read the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 up to chapter 12. I mean, there is such a, a mighty revolution that was taking place. But so that I can just sensitize you so that you can go and read it, I just want to highlight it a little bit. You know, the children of Israel had been in a place of judgment. They had sinned against God, and God took them to a place of judgment. And for 70 years, they went through judgment. And by the grace of God, they returned back to the place of their inheritance. They returned back to Judah. They were in Jerusalem. And they came back with a lot of expectations. And they came back and started working very hard to rebuild what had already been destroyed. And at this point, they had succeeded in rebuilding the temple and also rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. But something happens. After the, re the rebuilding of the, of, of the two, Instead of getting that sense of satisfaction, you know that sometimes, you know, when you have accomplished something, there is always that, you know, that, that expression, you always feel, I'm satisfied, I've done it, I've made it, and there is always that, uh, th that feeling of accomplishment. But instead of the feeling of accomplishment, there was an emptiness. They had done so much, yet there was an emptiness. And I like the step that they took. They told uh, the, the, the high priest, uh, the, the priest, sorry, or the scribe Ezra, 
They said, Ezra, can you just come and read to us the word of God? Possibly we can understand why there is an emptiness inside of us. And the, and, and, and the Ezra, Ezra came and he told them, okay, you can come tomorrow and come very early in the morning. So very early in the morning, they had come to the place of meeting and they had also built a dais. So he was standing at a place where everybody could see him in Judah. And Ezra led to, read to them the word of God. And he read the word of God. Of course, there were the Levites that were surrounding him and they were helping the people to interpret the word so they could understand exactly what was in the law of God. For six good hours, Ezra read to them the word of God. And nobody dared move. Nobody said, I want to go and feed my cattle. Nobody said, I want to go and take care of my chores. Nobody said that I want to leave. For six hours, they were standing, listening to the men of God. And as they were listening, a revolution was taking place inside of them. A revolution will only take place when we go back to the word of God. They were now realizing something went wrong. The reason of the emptiness inside of us, it is because our foundation has been shaken. I thank God for the word that came last Sunday. You know, mom spoke to us so candidly concerning the word of God for this year, the prophetic word for this year. And God asked us a question. And I know that God is waiting for an answer. And not just for an answer, he is also waiting for response, action. The God asks us, when the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? So God is saying, the foundation have been shaken. Are you just going to sit pretty? Are you going to take some action? And God is waiting for us to respond. I, like God, I thank God for that word because I purpose to take action this year because I know foundations have been shaken. You know, I don't want to sit in a, in a, in a building where the foundations have been shaken. Because that's a very dangerous building. It can collapse any time. But God is saying the foundation has been shaken and therefore I've given an opportunity to do something so that the building cannot collapse. So these people, or the people of Nehemiah, they discovered that the foundation had been shaken. Remember the nation of Israel, the foundation of Israel was the law of God. The word that was given to them by Moses, that was their foundation. And Joshua was told that this word of the Lord shall never depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night that you may prosper and have good success. So your foundation, Joshua, your foundation, Israel, is the word of God. So as they were listening to the word of God, they discovered they had a shaken foundation. They had deviated from the foundation and they had been shaken. And they were listening though, and a revolution was taking place inside of them. And they were saying, now that we have discovered our foundation has been shaken, we have to reverse it and do something so that the building, the entire building cannot collapse. And one of the foundations that had been shaken was the foundation of the principle of first fruits. They were not giving to God the first fruits as Moses said. You know now, the, 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 the matter about first fruit is not about what I decide, it is what is written in the word. So they discovered Moses spoke about first fruits, but we have deviated from the foundation. And therefore they came together and they said, because our foundations have been shaken, we have to do something. And I like what these people do. As the righteous, the foundation has been shaken. So as the righteous of Judah, they decided we have to do something. And they decided... We are going to cut a covenant with God. I love this. We need to cut covenants with God this year. We have to see where the foundation has been shaken and go to God and say, we have known where the foundation is shaken, so we are going to cut a covenant with you. So that is what the people of Judah said, and they chose 84 leaders. Among the leaders was a governor. We need to come to that place where even governors say, we are going to cut a covenant with God. So there was this covenant. Nehemiah the governor was among the people that were going to seal the deal. They were going to sign for it. They were also the Levites, the, 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 the people of God, even the priests were there, the leaders of the church. The whole nation came back. They appointed 84 leaders, even leaders of families. Whoever was a leader in Judah was chosen among the 84 people as the people that were going to write the covenant with God and also sign it. And part of the covenant had a lot to do with first fruits. 
I say the foundation had been shaken. So concerning the part of the first fruits, this is what they wrote in the, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the covenant that they were cutting with God. They said, and this is in Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35 to 37. And I will read. This is what they said. We also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops and of every fruit tree. Verse 36. And it is also written, as it is also written in the law, the word of God, as it is also written in the word of God, we will bring the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, of our herds and of our flocks to the house of our God, to the priest ministering there. Verse 37. Moreover, we will bring to the storerooms of the house of our God, to the priest, the first fruit of our ground, of our grain offerings, of the, of the fruit of all our trees, and of the new wine and olive oil. So what were they saying? In the covenant they were cutting with God, they were saying, whatever the servant of God told us to do, as it was given from heaven, concerning first fruit, we are going back to it. And let me say that this. This was not a simple covenant. This was a covenant of curses and blessings. What they were saying is, whatever we are going to put in this covenant, as we have agreed as the nation of Judah, whoever is not going to obey it, may curses come upon them. And whoever is going to receive it, may blessings come upon them. That is how foundations are, are restored. That is how the shaken foundations are restored. Let us go to Hannah. Hannah and her husband were givers. They were very good givers. They loved God. The Bible says that year after year, they went to Shiloh, the place that God had chosen as his house to sacrifice to God. But even as givers, they had shaky foundations. And the problem was they did not understand how the foundation, who the, the foundation that was shaken, they blamed Penina. They said, it is Penina, it is Penina. Instead of looking at the foundation that was shaken, they blamed it on somebody. Let us not bring our problems to people. Our problems, we need to go to the root. We need to see the foundation itself. So they were blaming it on this, on this woman. And for a long time, they blamed her. They did not know how to deal with the, with, the, with the shaken foundations. Hannah dealt with the shaken foundation with cries and lack of appetite. She was always crying, and she, most of the time she could lose appetite. Elkanah did not know how to deal with the shaken foundation. Elkanah responded by becoming very, very insecure. He feared that his favorite wife was going to abscond. So he went even into doing some other wicked things, like trying to bribe her. You know, he was saying, you know what, my, I have to do everything that it takes to keep my wife here because Penina is the problem. Well, Penina was not the actual problem. So he went into, uh, into depths of trying to bribe her. You know the double portions, the double portions, this was the ceremonial food, yeah? The ceremonial food that was given in the temple. When you went to give an offering, for example, you were giving a lamb, you, uh, and it was burnt, part of it was given to you so that you can go and eat. It was a meal that was supposed to eat before God. So when he was given, he could come and slice it and give a portion to his son, another portion to, to, to the other wife, and he would give a double portion to Hannah, trying to bribe her so that she can continue living with him. He even lied to her, tried to lie to her, just to try to keep her because he did not know how to deal with the foundation. And he was telling her, listen, my wife, am I not better than 10 sons, yeah? So don't worry about sons. I'm better than 10 sons. Of course, this was not convincing. They did not know how to deal with it until the day that, Penina, that, 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 that um, Hannah went to the house of God. She had gone there several times, but there was this particular day. She went to the house of God and went through a revolution. A revolution took place inside of her as she was in the house of God. There is a revolution that is going to take place, but it must start in the house of God. It must start by the word of God. As she was sitting at the table, taking the double portion, 
The word of God hit her. A revolution took place inside of her. And she decided, no, 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 no. This thing has gone so on for so long. Let me run to the altar. And she ran to the altar. And she started communing with God. And she was communing with God. She understood our shaken foundation is not about benign. Our shaken foundation is just about a first fruit. The problem was a first fruit. They needed to offer to God a firstborn son. They had not offered to God a first son. They blamed it on Penina. The issue was about a first fruit. So as she was in the presence of God, she told God, I know it is about a first fruit. And therefore, I'm going to rebuild the foundation. I'm going to offer to you a first fruit as it is written in the word of God. Hallelujah. She promised a first fruit. And she was going to pay her vow. The second one that point I want to drive home so that we can be able to actualize this principle of, of first fruit, it is determination. We need to be determined. Giving of any nature, giving in the house of God, will always be opposed by the enemy. Why? Because he understands the principles of the kingdom. He knows that when you give a first fruit, he cannot stop the multiplication principle. He cannot stop a harvest because it is a principle. God, when we apply the principle, God makes sure, God will enable us to be able to receive our harvest. So the enemy tries to, the enemy will always try to, 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 to stop us from offering this sacrifice. That is what the enemy tries, to stop us from giving the, 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 the sacrifice to God. The enemy will fight back. He knows that once the first fruit is given, a harvest is imminent. He cannot do about it. These are the principles of God, established by God, and therefore he understands if this person is going to give a first fruit, this person is going to receive a harvest, and I cannot stop it. So what will he do? He will try to stop you from giving a first fruit. He will come with so many ideas. No, this is an Old Testament thing. No, this thing does not work. No, this thing. He would say so many things to try to stop you from offering a first fruit. And that is why we have to be determined. That is why we have to be purpose. I am going to give it. At whatever cost, I'm going to give it. Hallelujah. Hannah was determined. Remember this woman goes and says, God, I'm going to give it. She didn't have it. And I know I'm talking to a people today that are going through a hard time. The whole world is going through challenges because of the, of the pandemic that we are in. And let me say this. We can borrow a leaf from Hannah. I know somebody somewhere is listening to me. And even you're using borrowed bundles to be able to listen to this message. And other people do not even know where the next meal is going to come from. I know I'm speaking to somebody who is in a hospital bed. I know I'm speaking to people who have bills. They don't even know how to go, they're going to pay these bills. I know I'm talking to people that are going through a challenge. But let me say this. The word of God has the power to take us from where we are to the next level. It is the word of God that delivers us. And that is why I want to speak the word of God today. Hannah did not have a firstborn child because she was barren. But when she went before God, she did not murmur or complain. When she discovered that she needed to give God a first fruit for her breakthroughs, she did not go and say, God, look what you have done. You have made me barren. I cannot even afford a firstborn. I am barren. I cannot have this first fruit, yet I'm supposed to give it. She never murmured or complained. She understood that God is the one that gives it to the sower. The moment we understand it is God who gives us the seed so that we can sow and so that we can live by the principles of the kingdom, it will really help us. Hannah understood it. So she went to God and said, God, I'm going to give a first fruit. But I cannot give it unless you give it to me. And I'm just asking that person who wants to give a first fruit. You are determined to give a first fruit. You don't have it. Do what Hannah did. Go before God and say, Father, I am focused. I am purpose. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give a first fruit but I don't have it. Therefore, I come to you. You that gives seed to the sower, just put the seed in my hands and I will give it to you. She said, give me a firstborn son and I will give him back to you as a first fruit. 
We have to make this prayer. We have to go before God and say, I want to do it. My whole system is in it. It is your word. There is a promise in it. So I want to do it. But because I do not have it, I'm not going to rest. I'm not going to give you rest until you place the first fruit in my hands because I have to give it. Hannah did not even mama. You know, she could have gone to God. Many times we do this. I am also a victim. I've done that before. We go to God and say, God, you know, I don't have it. And there is a blessing that is tied to this thing. Now, because I do not have it, just give it to me so that because, because I don't have it, just give me a harvest because I, I, I don't have it. Now, Hannah understood better than that. She understood that God will never alter his word to suit anybody. His word is established. His covenants are true. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Of course, I know about the mercies of God and the grace of God. But his principles are established. His word is forever and cannot change. So she went to God and said, I know if I do not give a first fruit, I will not receive a harvest. But because you are the one that gives seed, give me the seed, I will sow it, and then the harvest will be mine. She understood the principles of the kingdom. And let me say also, she also had another problem. She was determined. But there were issues. When we, did, we, we purpose to give God an offering, there will always be challenges. The next challenge was the first fruits were not popular. And I know that even today, they are not very popular in many quarters. I know in FEM we don't have a problem with fast fruit because we know it's the word of God. But I know there is a challenge all over the world where people say, uh -uh, we don't believe it. We cannot do it. But let me say this. There was a challenge. It was not popular even in her days. Who had made it unpopular? The priest. Who has made it unpopular these days? The priest because they have abused it. Eli and his sons were behaving badly. They were abusing what was given in the temple and the people were not happy. Nobody wanted to give their firstborns to Eli. Otherwise, they were, their, their firstborns were going to be contaminated. The firstborns that were supposed to be a first fruit, nobody wanted them to get near Eli. His sons were bad. I mean, they were bad boys. They never cared about the things of God. But Hannah decided, though every person on the face of the earth is going to deviate from the word of God, even though the priests are going to abuse whatever they are going to abuse, I am going to give a first fruit. Why? Because it is a principle. And I know as if, if I do not apply, apply this principle, I will not have as my reward. So she said, regardless of what is happening to Eli and his sons, I am going to give a first fruit. I'm not going to give it to them. I'm going to give it to God. But because they're the representatives of God, I will take it to them, but I'm just going to do something that they, that, 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 you know, something that they do not do so that I can have as my reward. And this is what she did. She made a Nazarite vow. Because of the problem that was in the temple, she made a Nazarite vow. Now, because of time, I'll not be able to explain Nazarite vow, but you can read it in Numbers chapter 6. It is in Numbers chapter 6, verse 1 to 21. You can just read it. It's just self-explanatory. But by entering into this vow, Hannah was making a statement. And this is what the statement was. My first fruit, my firstborn, will not be like Eli or his sons. There will be a distinction. I will give my son to Eli, but he shall never be like him. He shall never be like his son because my son is not going to serve under the law, but he's going to serve under a vow. There's a difference. Serving under a law and serving under a vow. Because when I make a vow, it is between me and God that I'm going to obey his law because I'm serving under a vow. The second thing was, the, the next statement that she was making was, and uh, the, 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 the son was not going to serve like the Levites. Eli was a Levite. He was not going to serve like the Levites who used to serve God between the age of 30 and 50. They served for 20 years. They were waiting for 20, 50 years to, you know, to, 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 go, to get to the age of 50 so that they can go back to normal life. No, he said, no, no, my son is not going to serve like that. My son is going to serve for a lifetime because he's a fast fruit and a fast fruit must stand in the holy place forever because a fast fruit does not belong to a man, it belongs to God. She was saying, unlike Eli and his sons, my son will serve with long hair 
For them, they had a right to cut their hair, but my son is going to serve with long hair as a sign of the vow and the commitment he has done before God. So that whenever he looks at the long hair, he will remember he has a vow with God to serve him forever. My son will not indulge in wine. He will be set apart for God. My son will not interact with the dead. He will interact with the living. What was Hannah saying? My first fruit is going to speak. My first fruit is going to stand before God. My first fruit is my business with God. Hannah's first fruit was not just a common first fruit. It was a very expensive, very costly. It costed her her very life. Hannah gave her life in her first fruit. Why am I saying this? Levites were not supposed to come near the dead. So Hannah was saying, this man is going to be the light of Israel. But even as, as the light of Israel, when I become sick, he cannot come near me. Why? Because he's a Levite. He, because he's a, he's a Nazarite. When I die, he will never come near me. He will not even bury me. So I give my life as a first fruit. I'm giving my all. A very costly one. She also gave the life of her son in the first fruit. She was saying, this son is so precious to me. This thing that I'm giving is so precious to me, but I offer it to you, O God, as a first fruit. In other words, my son has no life of his own because he has been put in the treasure box. My son will be different from the other youth because he has been put in the treasure box. My son will not take any delicacies. Some of the delicacies that the other people will be taking because I have put him in the offering basket. Our first fruits must speak to God. Our first fruit must cost us. We must be like David who said, I will not give anything to God unless it costs me. If it does not cost me, it shall not make a, it shall not, it shall not make a statement. So she gave a first fruit that costed her her life and the life of her son. The, that point and the last point that I want to speak about is expectation. I know many people are very humble and they love God. And they say, me, I'm just humble. I love God. So I just give my offering because I love God. That is okay. It's good to love God. But it's also very much okay to expect when you're giving to God. Expect a reward. Expect a reward. The joy of giving is receiving. The joy of, 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 of giving, the joy of giving is receiving because it is in the word of God. Look at the promises of God. If you do this, I will do this. If you be, or you obey and be, uh, if you obey and listen to me, you will eat the fruit of the land. Give it shall be given to you. It is a principle. So I don't want to do part of it. I want to do all of it. So I give expectantly. Who wants to go to war that has no loot? Even Jesus Christ, our Lord himself, when he gave himself as a first fruit on that cross, the first fruit on that cross, when he gave himself, he had a lot of expectations. He was expecting a reward from God. And this is in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2b. The Bible says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He went through the pain of the cross and the shame of the cross, because there was so much shame with the cross, because he had expectations. God had promised him, if you are going to do this thing, then you shall sit at my right hand side. And that is where he's seated today, making intercession for you and me. What a great savior. Even when it comes to tithing, we just do not tithe. We tithe expectantly. Giving a 10% is not easy. We need it. But we know we give it because there is a promise tied to it. It is for our good that we give our tithes. But the Bible says, if you can read the famous uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. The Bible says, bring the whole tithes. Read your Bible. Sometimes we read, bring the tithe. No, it is the whole tithe. The whole tithe is 10%. Bring the whole tithe. And then expect a reward. And what is the reward? God will pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to, to, to store it. 
And he will also rebuke the devourers that devour your salary, that devour your increase, they devour in your business, they devour in your working place, children become sick, KRI takes more than they're supposed to take. There are those devourers that come to devour. There are problems in your businesses that devour. So God promises that when you're faithful in tithing, he is going to deal with those, with those, with those, uh, with those um, devourers. But the question is this. The issue here is, it is the whole tithe. The whole, the 10%. So if you give 10, 50% of the tithe, maybe you cannot claim this blessing. If you give 99.9%, .9%, possibly you cannot claim for, the, for this blessing. But I know God is merciful. So God is calling us to repair also, to repair this wall that is shaken, the wall of tithing, so that we can start giving the whole 10%, so that we can go back to God and say, God, I've given my whole tithe, and this is your word. Watch the principle working for you because the principles of the kingdom never fail. You know, somebody will ask me, but what is the reward of fast fruit? Because I know we are in season of fast fruit. In faith evangelistic ministry, in January and February, we set the months aside to give our fast fruits because these are, are, are fast fruits with a promise. What is the promise? The promise is the multiplication of the seed that is sown. When you give your fast fruit, expect a multiplication of the fast fruit that has been given. Let me put it this way. Abraham gave his son Isaac as a fast fruit. Years later, his children were in Egypt. And they multiplied so fast, eh? there were so many daughters and so many sons being born to the Israelites that it caught the attention of Pharaoh. Pharaoh could not understand. Why are these people increasing so fast? Why are they increasing more than our own people? What he could not understand is as fast fruit was given, way back a fast fruit was given, and God had said, give this fast fruit and your sons will become like the stars of heaven. They shall become like the, the, the sand on the seashore. And that was also what was happening in Egypt. Pharaoh could not understand it. It is because a fast fruit had been sown. Hallelujah. The people of Israel in the Old Testament were very smart people, very, very smart. They gave a fast fruit of everything they possessed. They gave a fast fruit of different types of grains, different types of, uh, I mean, the different types of grains, different types of fruits, different types of domestic animals. They gave their firstborn sons and look at what happened. For grain, they received multiplication of grain. For fruits, they received a multiplication of fruits. For domestic animals, they received a multiplication of domestic animals. For sons, they received a multiplication of sons and daughters. That is how it works. Hannah did not just give a costly sacrifice for nothing. It costed her, her life and the life of her son. It was not in vain. The Bible does not say that, you know, she was asking God for this. But she understood the principle. When you understand the principle, I mean, even your prayer life changes. You know, sometimes you beg, oh, God, have mercy, look at me, I'm so miserable. No, 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 that's not the way to work. God will just leave you in your misery. What works are the principles. You go to God and say, God, according to your word, you say that when I give a fast fruit, you shall give a multiplication. When I tithe, you shall rebuke the devourer and send a blessing. I shall not have room enough. That is the way it goes. You're speaking to God's word. His principles, they work like that. So let us stop those prayers. The prayer that we pray must be based in the word of God, the principles of the kingdom of God. Hannah understood it. She gave a costly one expectantly. And look at, you know, you know when, when you apply the principles of the kingdom, the, principle, the principles will work. You may not even need to ask for something. It shall just come automatically. Why? Because God watches over his word to perform it. Apply his word. He will do his part of the word because he's holy and cannot change his word. So Hannah understood this. And look what happened. Hannah gave her first fruit, her firstborn son Samuel. God had a representative here on earth. And his representative was Eli. He may have corrupted himself, but he was still the anointed one of God. God had not replaced him. So God put a burden, such a heavy burden, on Eli. And, and, and let's just read what the Bible says. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21 to 22, the Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, Eli 
would bless, that is a, a past continuous. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and give to the Lord. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Hannah applied the principle. God put a burden on Eli, his prophet or his representative. Every time they came to the temple to see Samuel, or they came to offer a sacrifice, whenever he met them, the Bible says he would bless them. He would prophesy to them. May you have many more sons and daughters because you gave a first fruit. He kept prophesying it until it manifested. In other words, when Hannah gave her first fruit, God had an obligation. And God had to use his servant to decree and declare until it is done. So let us bring our first fruits to the Lord. And the Lord God, who honors his word, will honor his word. Hannah received a harvest of three sons and two daughters because she applied. And in conclusion, let me say this. Our first fruits are not just for us. They are also for nations and kingdoms. The first fruit you give this season will bring a harvest in your life, but will also go ahead and bring a, 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 a harvest in your nation and in the nations of the world because that is, the, that is how it works. Look at this this way. Abraham offered his son as a first fruit. He received a nation as God had promised. But out of that nation arose the Messiah of the nations and the kingdoms of the world. Because one man gave a first fruit, the whole world is blessed because the Messiah is the blessing of all creation. Hannah received out of her first fruit, she received three sons and two daughters for herself. But her first fruit impacted her nation Israel in such a great way. Her first fruit restored the foundations that were shaken in the nation of Israel. The foundations had been shaken. The word of God had become rare. There were no open visions. But because of her first fruit, the voice of God was heard once again in the temple saying, Samuel, Samuel, I'm going to do a new thing in Israel. Why? Somebody put a first fruit and the nation was getting blessed. He became such a prophetic voice in the nation of Israel. And the nation was restored back to God. They won victories. It was during the time that the first fruit was on the altar that the Ark of the Covenant that had been stolen by the Philistines was restored to the nation of Israel. The glory of God returned to the nation of Israel. And let me also say this, Samuel continues to impact the nations and kingdoms. Today we are listening to, 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 to the word of God that was performed through the first fruit Samuel. Today we are getting blessed because somebody gave a first fruit. Nations are getting blessed because somebody gave a first fruit. As I finish, I want to say this. God is asking us this year to restore the foundations. He's asking us. The foundations have been shaken. Has the foundation of the first fruit been shaken in your life? Has it failed in your life? Has it not been applied in your life? I want to give you an opportunity this morning. And I want you to just go before God like Hannah and make a vow before God. Make a vow. Just go to God and say, God, I want to give this first fruit. I'm talking about giving now. In the, in the, I want us to give. I want us to be ready to give. Because I'm speaking about first fruit, I want us now to give. I know the number is on the screen. The number of giving is on the screen. For the locals and for the internationals, there is a number on the screen. And I want you to decide this morning and just go before God and say, I'm going to give a first fruit. This year, my first fruit is going to speak. This year, my first fruit is going to be better. This year, my first fruit, I'm giving it with an understanding. And because I know it is a principle of the kingdom, it shall work for me in the hour of darkness. I am sowing a seed. I am giving a first fruit. And this first fruit is going to be my harvest for the rest of the year. When others are going through turmoil, my first fruit will speak for me. When challenges are all over the world, my first fruit will continue giving me 
harvest after harvest. We have January and February. So I want you to go before God and just make a vow like Hannah and say, Father, I want to give a first fruit. I may not be having it right now, but I'm naming it. I'm naming it. I'm going to give this amount as a first fruit. And God, I know and I'm sure that your principles never fail. So just, just as, 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 as I continue, I just want you to prepare. If you are able to give today or if you just want to make a vow, just go before God and say, this is what I'm going to give. If you can be able to give it today, you can just send it because it is a season of fast fruit and you have until the end of next month to give your fast fruit. But let me also say this. We can give fast fruits throughout the year. We give in January, we give in February, we give in December. Why? Because whenever God releases something new in our lives, a fast fruit is needed. If you're going to venture into a new business, a fast fruit is needed. Whenever you get into other levels, a fast fruit is needed. A fast fruit can be given at any time. But I just ask you now, as you prepare to give, let me say a prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I have delivered the word that you give to me, the word concerning fast fruits. It is a principle of the kingdom. It is for those who have and those that do not have. Because, Lord, you are the giver of seed and you give it to the sower. Your people are committed to sow. Some of them do not have, O oh God. But we stand before you, Lord, like your servant Hannah in the Bible. And we are asking, O oh God, give us a first fruit and we shall bring it into the house of God. And I thank you because of the power of the principle of the kingdom. As we give, we shall see victory after victory and harvest after harvest in the year 2021 and beyond. Thank you for the power of your principles that never fail, O oh God. They shall work for your people. I decree and declare it in the name of Jesus. That even before the year ends, O oh God, many will be testifying that in the year, O oh God, when you ask us, O oh God, what will the righteous do when the foundations are shaken? We went ahead, and Father God, we gave a first fruit, and it has worked for us. Bless your people as they give, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I wish to call Pastor Sam to continue with the service. Thank you so much, Pastor Zachary, for a powerful, powerful word. Amen. Thank you for reminding us about the principle of the first fruit. And I, th and I want to, you know, I was blessed so much by the first point of revolution. We need a revolution. Some of these things, we forgot them, or we stopped doing them, or they are not taught. But indeed, Pastor Zachary, I can confirm that according to the word of the Lord, the Lord expects us to give first fruits. Tithe and first fruit is not a matter of whether or not it's a matter of obedience. And you know, I love how you've brought it out very well about first fruits. Because first fruit says, I'm giving you the first and the best because I recognize God that all good things come from you. It also says, when you're giving first fruits, the Lord, I'm helping, I'm, I'm trusting you to help me harvest the rest. It was not to be stored. It was not to be distributed. It was to be given directly to the house of God. Immediately you received your harvest. I believe you have been blessed. And in case you have not been able to give, Pastor Zachary has already led us in a time of giving. The details are still on the screen. You can continue giving even as we continue with concluding the service. You know, I want to invite everybody who has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The Bible calls him the firstborn of all creation, Pastor Zachary. Jesus is the first fruit, the firstborn over all creation. God gave us his first son. The word of God says in the book of John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, who is the firstborn? And because he gave his firstborn, the principle of multiplication. Now God has many sons and daughters in the kingdom. And you can be part of the sons and the daughters of the kingdom because God gave his first son because of you and me. If you're there and you have not received Jesus Christ 
as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to accept him today. Accept him in your heart. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me, a prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I am a sinner. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Today I believe in you and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins and make me a child of God. From today, I belong to the kingdom of God. I am a new creation. I am born again. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now we want to conclude and we are going to have Sunday school after this service, after I make the, I make the benediction, we are going to have Sunday school so you can gather the children together. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for today's service. Thank you for the preaching of the word. Thank you, God, for teaching us about the principle of fast fruit, giving, oh God, joyfully giving. Father God, the grace of giving, I pray that the grace of giving will be shared upon each and every individual who is watching and who will watch this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Father God, may your people abound in the grace of giving this year, like the church of Macedonia. And you, O oh God, you shall supply all our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus, in glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you because you shall do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever, we have ever asked, th thought, or imagined this year 2021 in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you because you are a healer. You are still healing in 2021. I am committing each and every individual who is sick, who is in their beds right now. I pray for their healing right now. I release the healing power even to flow in their body in the name of Jesus. May we receive testimonies of healing. May we receive testimonies of salvation, deliverance, oh God. Even mental health being restored in the mighty name of Jesus. I am praying right now upon each and every young person disturbed mentally in the name of Jesus. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding even flood your heights, your hearts and your minds in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for wholeness. We pray for shalom upon each and every individual watching in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for directions, even for people who are seeking for direction. May they hear your voice in 2021. May you guide them. May you walk, walk with them in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for provision for every business, every individual trusting you for provision for every kind of thing right now. Lord, may you supply their need. May you open doors. I pray for great and effectual doors that no man can close in 2021. I pray for safety. I pray for security. I pray for protection in 2021 in the name of Jesus. Today I address every stubborn situation. I address every ancient gate that has refused to lift up and every individual trusting you God to terminate and bring even an expiry date to a situation. I declare an expiry date to every stubborn situation in the name of Jesus. I pray for your blessings to abound to your people. Father, may they prosper. May they experience breakthrough. May they experience grace. May they experience miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you because this year, Lord, there shall be a distinction even between your people, Lord, your children and the people of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. May your presence even fill every room and fill every heart right now that is watching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please join us for the Sunday school session. God bless you. See you next Sunday.
Happy New Year, boys and girls. And how are you? I am blessed. I am so excited today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am so happy that we have gathered again for another service. And before we start, can we make a prayer, a short prayer? So let us close our eyes and pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you in the beginning of 2021. We want to thank you, Lord, because you have given us this year, Lord. We thank you for preserving us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you, Jehovah God, because, Lord, you have gathered us to listen to your word, Lord. And I pray today that as we listen to your word, O oh Father, would you open our ears so that we will have an understanding ear. I thank you and I bless you. Bless you for every one of the boys and girls who is watching. I bless you even for our parents. And this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Can someone say amen? I know you are so excited. 2021. Can you just believe the year has started and we are already in week three. Imagine week three. Oh, bless the Lord. Guess what? Some of us are back in school. And I know when we went to school, a lot of things had changed. Some of us had added some weight. Some of us had lost some weight. And I think we were so excited to see our teachers. And today we have a very interesting lesson. And the lesson we are going to have today, we shall also link it up to the word that was given by Pastor Mom for 2021. I don't know whether all of you have heard the word. Pastor Mom read a word in Psalms chapter 11. And the word was, if the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? Now let's get to our lesson for today. Our lesson for today is another chance. I know you remember that we started that series with teacher favor on Sunday, another chance. And we are going to have four lessons just dealing with another chance. Why are we looking at another chance? Now we know so many people died last year and so many people got sick last year, but we are alive today. We are watching because God has given us another chance. And our subtopic is a very interesting one. Imagine, it's as simple as, Give it one more year. Can you repeat after me? Give it one more year. So we are reading from Luke chapter 13, verse 6 and 9. Three verses only. Now before we get that, I want to give you a very, very small link up. When teacher Gladys talked about Christmas story, we said in Christmas we were remembering of the birth of Jesus Christ. And when the angel came, he said he will be called Wonderful Counselor. He will be called Mighty God. So uh, teacher Gladys told us Jesus was given so many titles. There is one that we are going to mention today that Jesus was a teacher. You know you have a teacher in class. Before the teacher can come to class, they usually prepare notes. Now we have teachers who teach the lower class. Then we have the teachers for the upper class. And we have some teachers even in college and university. But Jesus was a super teacher. He taught the old. He taught the young. He taught mothers. Imagine he's teaching the small boys, the big boys, the old mamas. In other words, he was a teacher who could teach. We can even call him like a principal. You know, when you go to school, the headmaster, like on Monday on the day of parade, he calls all the children from nursery, from PP1, PP2, up to grade eight or class eight. And then he started addressing. Now, Jesus was such a teacher. So when we get to the story in Luke, Jesus was sitting with his disciples and he was teaching. And some people said, hey, Jesus, some people died. And uh -huh, he asked them, 
do you think they sinned so that they would die? I said, uh, uh, you know what, Jesus? There are even others who died because a wall collapsed on them. And Jesus told them, listen, don't think that they died because they sinned. And he said, to show you what happened, I will give you a parable. A good teacher always in a class should always use illustrations and examples. And Jesus was very famous in using illustrations. They are called parables. So in this scripture, he gives a parable. And this is the parable. There was an owner of a vineyard. A vineyard is like a big garden where you plant fruit trees. And in the vineyard, there were so many trees. Now remember, when you plant trees, it's because you want to eat fruits. So year one, he would come and visit the farm, looking for a fruit to eat. Then year one, he didn't get any. Year two, he didn't get any. The third year again, he came going round, and this fig tree, this one, it didn't have any fruit. So he called the gardener and he said, uh-uh, there is a problem here. For three years, I have come looking for fruit on this tree and there was nothing. I am thinking, and this is what I'm making a suggestion, it needs to be cut down. It is using the ground, it is using resources, it is useless. And the gardener said, sir, please don't give it one more year. And this is what I will do. In that one more year, I will dig around it and I will put manure on it and we will see by the end of the year where there will be fruit. If there is no fruit, now we can cut it down. I want to bring the story home. I want to bring the story home. Remember we said that 2021, God has given us another chance. Another chance to do what? Like the gardener. Jesus is our gardener in our life. Now let me tell you something small. Do you remember the story in Genesis? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the first thing we see after God created heaven and earth, he did a shamba. It's called the Garden of Eden. Meaning God is the one who, who is the owner of everything. When you and I were born, every boy, your mother, your father, your uncle, when all of us are born, God had a purpose for us. Just like the fig tree when it is planted. When God brought you on earth, it is because he had a purpose for you. So that you may tell about his goodness, you may share with the others about his grace, you can tell the others that Jesus saves. But you know what? Can you remember last year, how many people you told about the goodness of God? Do you remember how many times you gave out something good to a, a needy child? Probably you didn't, like the fig tree. Some of us just didn't share. And guess what? Instead of the owner having the tree to be cut down, the gardener said, mm -mm, give it one more year. Why one more year? Please ask yourself, what are we talking about? The gardener did not say, give it one more year so that I can cut the leaves up. And, uh, we are talking, uh, Pastor Mom told us that 2021, we will be talking about foundation. So the gardener was talking of, give me one more year to get back to the foundation because the tree cannot bear fruit if the roots are not well taken care of. So what was Jesus saying in this story? The gardener was saying, I will dig around it. What do we do when we are digging? We remove the weeds, we give air to the soil so that the roots can have 
nutrients. And when the roots have nutrients, the leaves can grow and the tree can bear fruit. So like the tree, because we are the tree in God's big garden called the earth. In fame, you are a tree. Remember I talked about the tree? In your school, you are the tree. When we are talking of digging around, it is like Jesus is saying, when you will read the word of God, it is Jesus digging around your life. Because the word of God, when it gets inside your heart, then you start producing good works. You stop cheating. You stop stealing. You stop lying. You stop disobedient. That is what we are calling good fruit. So the gardener who is Jesus in our case is saying in 2021, God, Please give this boy another chance, another chance to do what? To read the word of God, because that is a foundation. When we read the word of God, we know how to do right. We know how to put the full armor of God. Then he says, I will put manure. What is manure? Good works. Remember, manure helps the plant by providing the necessary resources, potassium and all those. So what are we talking about manure? Manure, as the word of God comes, it comes through hearing. Then in your heart, it is where you store the word of God. And then from your mouth, now we start seeing the fruits. So we are saying, Jesus in 2021 is giving us another chance, another chance to read the word of God, another chance to be good to the others, another chance to be better people than we were last year. Are we together boys and girls so you can repeat yourself and say, Lord, Thank you for giving me another year, 2021. And this is what I want us to do. Every time you wake up in the morning, the first thing you always tell yourself, this is another chance, this is a new day. Every time, as you open your eyes in the morning, before you can go to brush, before you can even go for tea, before you can go and take your porridge or tea, just tell God a simple prayer. Lord, thank you for another chance, for another day. I hope you have learned something today. That 2021, the Lord, remember, the Lord has committed. In other words, Jesus has said, I will dig around you. He is giving you life. It is digging around you. Putting mature a manure is bringing people, people who can speak to you. When teacher Gladys speaks to you, that is manure. Because that word is going to help you grow. When teacher Fever talk to you, when pastor mom speak and talk of God preserving us, that is manure because it is going to help you to be a good person, to produce fruits fruits of good works. Now, today's memory verse is from Psalms 85 and verse 7. Psalms 85 and verse 7. Show us your loving kindness or show us your unfailing love and grant us your salvation. Show us your loving kindness, as some other Bibles will say, show us your unfailing love and grant us your salvation. Why? Remember Pastor Mom said, as we build the foundations this year, we shall bear fruit. And as we bear fruit, let me tell you, child, let me tell you what will happen. Your, your grade in class will change, your performance will change, your concentration in class will change, and guess what? Mom and dad will love you more. Why? Because you'll bear good fruits. I hope you have learned something today, and guess what? We love you, Jesus loves you, and Pastor Mom loves you. We are praying for you. 
we are believing that God is going to help us to come back. And you know what? When we come back, we shall say, thank you, Lord, for another chance. Because 2021 is another chance. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Can we say a short prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for each and every person, each and every boy who has watched. Lord, we thank you for another chance. And we pray, dear Lord, declaring and decreeing that in 2021, we shall not die but live to declare the goodness of the Lord. We declare and decree that in 2021, we shall be better students. We shall be better children. We shall be better in everything we do. We shall give more. We shall serve more. We shall obey more. We shall read your word. We shall pray. We thank you, Lord, because we know that in 2021, you are going to preserve us, Lord. And no weapon formed and fashioned against us, we prosper. Lord, we declare that you're going to go with us in 2021. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. See you next Sunday and God bless you.